and welcome to this Charter Banker Institute webcast announcing the 2021 Young Banker of the Year competition. Uh, I'm Bill McCall, the current president of the Institute, and with me today is a glittering array of talent on our panel. Uh, I'll introduce them all in a moment to you, and we'll have a short discussion on the competition itself and how it has impacted on their lives and their various career paths. You'll also see Simon Thompson, who's the chief executive of our institute. Uh, he will appear on our screens in due course. And Simon will be giving you the key details of the competition itself. And we would urge all of you to consider entering as soon as you can. Now, in the meantime, uh, as I chat to the panelists, please use the online question function and I will try to get as many of those answered later as possible. So without further ado, with us today, we have Simone Det, who leads for the moment the United Nations Environment Finance Initiative, which is a global partnership between the UN and more than 300 banks, investors, and insurers. Now, Simone's career is varied and has majored on the environment and green impacts of finance and economic development. And in preparation for her role at UNEP, she spent half a year cycling from Germany to Iran. Who knew? Why would you? Uh, Simone was one of the judges in last year's Young Banker of the Year competition, and we are delighted to welcome her back to this Institute event. Now, winning that final just a few months ago was Tippi Malgrave, a banker with Arbuthnot Latham in Manchester, England. Now, Tippi is a private banker there and is also, he tells us, a keen obstacle runner. He loves doing things like Tough Mudder and Rough Runner. And I cannot and will not draw parallels between his day job and those particularly difficult obstacles that he talks about. He's also a father to a two-year-old who probably is uh, somewhere behind the camera creating mayhem, whilst everything will look calm and collected on the surface. Uh, Joanna Finlay is a, a sustainable banking manager at Virgin Money. Today, she is in the office uh, because she has some building work going on at home, and we didn't want to share any hammering and banging and drilling noises, certainly that would suggest that she was in a dental surgery. Now, she is also a past winner, and like Tippy, her idea centered on social inclusion. And you may well have seen her as a TEDx speaker in the past. So more from Joanna later. Now, Bernard Ajay was also a winner in the past, not so long ago, Bernard, 2016. And you are the program, program delivery manager for Lloyd's Banking Group. You haven't been in the office for almost a year, and we find you at your PlayStation desk, uh, which you tell me that you never use, of course, but everything is, is very serious for those listening at Lloyd's. Now, Bernard's star has risen, and he is a role model and mentor to many following in his footsteps. Through his RISE initiative, Bernard has supported more than 200 students in London, Manchester, Leeds, and Edinburgh. And I'm also hoping that in due course, Joining us will be Robert Dickey, um, a past winner of the competition. Robert is also the immediate past president of the Institute, where he served two years, as is the, the custom. And after a successful career spanning banking and insurance in the UK, Australasia, USA and Switzerland, Robert is now a pluralist. That doesn't mean he speaks in doubles. It means that he is now an independent director on a number of organizations' boards and advising those self-same organizations in Europe and the West Coast of the USA. He's a chartered banker, a fellow of our Institute, and also a fellow of the Royal Society, Society of Art. So that's the glittering panel. Um, we will have a, a short Q&A uh, from the moment, and uh, I'm going to come to each of them in turn and just take some reflections and views. Now, Tippi, Bernard, I know, has his Young Banker of the Year trophy within, oh, I don't know, maybe a meter of where he's sitting right now. I could ask you where is yours, but I don't want to, to embarrass 
you with that. Just remind us and the viewers who are tuning in globally, what was your winning idea again? Thank you, Bill. And uh, yes, my, 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 my little one, uh, Jasmine, absolutely loves having my trophy to play around with. And, 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 and to be honest, I've, I've, I've taken quite a lot of photos of Jasmine with my trophy and shared on social media. It's two of the things I'm most proud of. Uh, so uh, my, 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 my idea for the Young Banker of the Year 20, uh, 2020 was, uh, was, was titled uh, uh, as the Silk Account, which is called the Serious Injury Life Care Account. So it was a banking solution for people living with uh, disabilities and serious injury. Uh, so what I did was I designed a conceptual solution that would sort out their day-to-day uh, day -day banking but also prefer and bring uh, and, and give uh, solutions for their long-term financial planning and wealth management uh, for, uh, for the rest of their lives. So this centered on individuals living under the quota protection umbrella, which, uh, which, which concerned people with living with uh, mental incapacity and the professionals that support them. So I'm, I'm so proud that, to say. Yeah. So, so that vulnerability um, that you were accommodating, I know from uh, what you've told us in the past that your organization the bus not is is looking to implement that account that must be tremendous now joanna you are very settled in the northeast of england having i think gone to university in the northeast but never escaping um is that right um you also are keen on uh, to advance the social justice and inclusion point so you must have been heartened by tippy's subject but take us back to how things have changed for you since you uh, won the competition. Yeah, so um, I won it in 2017, which seems like a long time ago now because we were meeting people face to face back then. Um, my idea was about um, financial inclusion for previously homeless people. Um, and I'd been passionate about financial inclusion for a number of years at that point. But I would say it's it was really a clarifying moment for me. Um, to I think if you if you enter the competition and and you're going to get through all those rounds, you have to be really sure of what it is that you're passionate about. And for me, it was using my voice for those who were not heard. Um, and as a result of um, the competition um, and conversations with colleagues about how energised I am when I'm doing that sort of thing, I've then pursued that to be an ever growing part of my role. And now I work full-time um, advocating for vulnerable customers and those who are excluded and those who live in poverty as well. So yeah, that's what Sustainable Banking Manager does. So Bernard, that must also ring with you because that inclusion point was one of the, the key attributes of your uh, new payment scheme. Tell us a bit about that because there is a theme here from, from the other two past winners on yourself. Yeah. I think from from the way I came up with that idea and to, to take you to do a bit of a storytelling was I always found that a lot of people who have just come into this country, especially those that don't do not speak the language, they, they tend to suffer, they tend to become vulnerable customers because they don't know the ins and outs of of how banking or finance works within the organ within the UK. So my concept was to improve um uh, international transfers for these customers or for these people that have come from countries where they don't necessarily speak the language is to create a simple solution tailored in their own languages so that they're not able to undertake banking but also able to um, showcase or utilize how and understand how banking works in the UK. So keeping that in mind, my idea was to create a uh, uh, an international transfer calculator, if you want to call it. So something very simple, where it, it provided quite clearly a visibility on the cost of uh, international, international transfers to other countries. And the idea has been implemented. So not only have we implemented this simple idea through the bank, but we've also bridged the gap between uh, us and, uh, and underserved or vulnerable, uh, vulnerable customers. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bernard. Um Simone, you, you were one of the judges for the finalists last year and uh, having exposure to this young banker cohort must have been quite enlightening for you. Your group at UNEP Finance 
has a specific role around sustainability uh, of finance uh, with a, a green agenda. What what views and opinions did you take going away from that competition as the a judge in the final? What what impacts did it leave you with as an individual? It was uh, really one of my favorite moments of 2020, to be honest. Uh, it was just uh, incredibly inspiring because, uh, I mean, you know that uh, the framework we promote and uh, we uh, manage at Unipify is the principles for responsible banking, which about 40% of the global banking industry have uh, joined. And at the end of the day, it's all about using banking products and services to make positive change in the world. And, uh, you know, this young bankers competition is doing exactly that. Uh, and it was incredibly inspiring to see people, young people using the tools they have from their profession to uh, really address day-to-day -day problems that they see. I mean, be Joanna, now this is the first time I'm hearing it, you know, for previous Obviously, homeless people, or being at uh, Bernard and and, and Tippy, um, you know, with uh, people with migration background or people with uh, mental disabilities. Um, I think it's fantastic, and I think it shows really um, what a positive force banking can be, and how much innovation and creativity you can develop in, in banking. And I'm going to steal something here from Simon, and don't don't be mad. But he said that um, after the competition last year, and it really stuck with me. You know, we want a banking sector where one day, when young people graduate and they think like, "Oof, what profession do I want? And what profession can I really go and change the world?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, right, banking." That's how you do it. And uh, so I think this is wonderful. And that's uh, why uh, really from Unipify side, we are supporting this competition and uh, we are trying to help to bring it to the rest of the world. Uh, because I think, you know, this innovation should really happen on a, on a global scale. And I'm very curious to see what issues will be tackled and what ideas we'll see from this year's competition. So what you've highlighted actually is the the gradual internationalization of both the Chartered Banker Institute and this competition, because in years gone by, this would have been a wholly domestic Scottish, then UK, and now a more global point. And today, the whole point of this is to encourage our members. We've got almost 30,000 members uh, around the world, a lot of them in the UK, but a great number in other places who are watching this, probably on catch up because of time differences. But going way back to the, the sort of almost genesis of this past winner, Robert, um, uh, you missed your glowing introduction. <laughs> so I won't Sorry about that. make you blush again. Um, you, you won the competition in, in 1991, and I'll, I'll repeat that because it was 1991. Much has <laughs> changed, uh, much has changed, not least you, you and I in terms of our outlook on, on the world. Um, what were your motives at the time? Well, um, my motives were very, very much sort of threefold. I mean, the um, there was it was I the, the course the actual um, subject which uh, you mentioned, Bill, is now much more international um, and much more about um, the sort of development and innovation in banking. Back in 1991, it was actually a discussion on the Scottish economy and how it could learn from the tiger economies of Asia. So my main interest was I was actually very interested in Asia. And um, you know the the countries that were in that, that and uh, so I was I was very keen to get part take part in that. Second piece was it was very much a sort of a personal challenge. I was in between jobs and I thought it would be a very interesting thing to do. Then the third one was I, I was in the I think the competition. Simon will correct me, but I think it'd been running for a few years by then, maybe five or six. And um, no one from a Scottish as for my Glasgow based bank had ever won it. And I thought it would actually be rather interesting if we could. Um, could win it for my bank based in Glasgow, which we did, which I was very proud of. So the, so the, uh, the point there that Tippy uh, was very keen to win it for a bus not based in Manchester, England. Um, yeah. So nothing changes. Nothing it changes under not. the sun. Um, no. the, 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 the international nature of it is, is clearly evident in terms of the development from round about 1987-88 up to today and there are a whole line of successful people robert you, your own career now uh, as a pluralist internationally etc is is there for anyone to to read um 
what do you think as a as an immediate past president and let me say it kindly a, a statesman of the the banking profession what do you think looking at it from your end of the the telescope these young bankers need to have in terms of skill sets um i think the thing which uh, and thank you for your very kind comments bill I mean, I think the key thing which I see in most of the people who have applied in the years I've been involved in Institute post this, both as, you know, re seeing, uh, going along to the competition and then being involved as, as, uh, as president, uh, was curiosity. I, I say I think it's been, it's been a real, it, it's been a joy for me to, to watch the, the, the competition develop and grow. And it's great to see the, the curiosity and then the creativity of folks. And I was so pleased when you mentioned about you know banking and um, um, you know Simone was just mentioning about how um, you know the really creative product ideas, the really creative innovative ideas, and about how banking is actually a force for good in industry and in the world. And I've been in hugely humbled, but also incredibly encouraged by folks seeing great opportunities for banking to make a great difference in people's lives, and folks coming up with wonderful ideas and using some really creative product ideas, and then using great um, fintech ideas, technology ideas, and really embracing it. And I've been left, you know, as, a, as you say, um, um, one of the elder statesmen of the, of, in this group, watching and feeling incredibly encouraged by the folks who are coming in through banking and really embracing that change and taking banking on to the next generation. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. So we've become uh, almost a digital institutes uh, over the course of the last number of years. And a lot of that sat with Simon and the executive group and driven by the, the council, the trustees of, of the institute itself. Uh, Tippy, you were one of the first, or the, the first person to win under a completely digital competition. So the other winners in the past would have been using the old fashioned concept of meeting people face to face, goodness me. Um, <laughs> how, how terribly novel. Um, how did you find the digital thing, I mean, th my thought here is it probably opens it up to people who wouldn't ordinarily say travel to the UK. So Tippy, how did you deal with the digital side? How was it for you? Well, well exactly. I, I think having it, uh, having having the Young Banker of the Year uh, event going global and going digital, it's the, the logical next step uh, because well, obviously 2020 was the first time that the event went virtual. So we're unable to meet physically at uh, Mansion House in London, which is very really unfortunate. I, that, that meant I couldn't meet the other contestants. However, what that afforded me the what, what that afforded the opportunity to was that, first of all, my entire colleagues across the bank could actually watch and live stream it. My friends and family could actually come on and support me uh, live and not have to watch it on or, or probably on playback if they wanted to. But just knowing that I had that level of support and people were able to watch and see me, that gave me extra encouragement and was quite fantastic, really. So I think going, going virtual and going global is the logical next step for it. And talking about the international aspect of it as well, my, my career in banking did not start in the UK. My first job in banking was in, or was, it was in a Nigerian bank in Africa. So the competition it's already global it's already international just by myself being in there and bernard also we're ha having a having an idea of uh, people coming from different nationalities so it is a logical next step really having this in a global and virtual environment uh, joanna i know you agree uh, wholeheartedly with that and and you your organization uh, at virgin uh, is one of the sort of leaders around that digital footprint uh, of course um can i ask for your career, for anyone watching this now thinking you have to be really organized and have a five-year plan and everything else, did you have a plan? No. Um, I entered because someone suggested that I might be good at it and that it would be um, a good opportunity to share ideas more broadly. And I think the exciting thing about it, you know, to what um, Tippy was just saying there is that by going global and going digital, actually more people can engage with it. But I would say that you can also engage better with your idea. Um, so um, when I was doing, I was meeting people face to face, um, but I took time to meet with people who had been homeless and the charities trying to support them to understand the idea. Um, and 
I'd been doing that anyway. And then someone said, well, actually, if you do this competition, if you can get to the semifinals, then you would get to speak to lots more people in the sector. And I've never seen financial inclusion as a competitive point, in fact, it never ever should be. Um, and so I was quite excited about the idea that I might get to talk to 200 people across the industry and then share my idea. And I really do think that the competition is great for allowing good ideas to surface and then allow um, that to sort of permeate down and for us to connect across the sector to solve some of those. And that, so that's why I entered. And then in terms of the direction I've taken since, I suppose it's to continue doing that because I realized I'm most energized when I'm really focusing outside the sector on where the problems are and then connecting with people across and beyond our sector um, to, to do that. Um, and I think it's brilliant that Finance and Innovation Lab have been um, involved in the competition in the last few years because it's through them that I learned the word entrepreneur. Turned out all these years, that's what I had been and I never even knew it. I just thought I was a bit of an over-energized misfit. Um, but to connect with <laughs> others who have that mindset of wanting to solve societal problems and change banking from within and use all the resources that we have at our disposal in terms of you know the talent and reach that we have as banks I realized that that's what I want to do for my career as a result of doing the competition really. So we have um, this new word sustainability uh, that's being used around finance these days uh, in in the the institute history going way back almost 150 years there's a word stewardship um, and it's pretty much the same. Uh, so we, we haven't really lost track of it. We maybe forgot and lost it from time to time, but in the 150 years or so, the word stewardship is important. Now, Bernard, you, you've by ex example, post-winning, this uh, RISE uh, initiative that you have, uh, where you mentor lots of people, was that as a direct outcome of your, your uh, experience of this competition? And Maybe tell us about the aims of RISE because you've mentored about 200 people, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. so um, it, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I use this competition as a, as a platform or as a foundation of RISE. And the, the idea behind RISE was, is to go into disadvantaged areas and educate young people about employability. So showcase um, opportunities and uh, roles and jobs within the banking industry. Ah, we, we may have, uh, we may have lost, uh, it may be that there's a very large FIFA downloads coming Bernard uh, for your, your gaming at the moment. If we get him back, we'll get him back. Uh, the Institute's own 2025 Foundation takes some inspiration from that too, which is yeah. encouraging yeah. and coaching and funding individuals into a banking career uh, for those who perhaps ordinarily wouldn't uh, be able to do it. Simone, within uh, your group, you've got 300 or so banks uh, and investors signed up to the programme. If you were speaking to bankers today, how would you encourage us to engage with our banks to make them think about finance differently? Well, I am speaking to bankers today, I think. <laughs> you are? Well, I think uh, many, and I hope many in the audience um, who are hopefully uh, getting quite enthused about this and uh, are ready to apply and, and share ideas. And uh, look, I think um, the, the future of banking is really around solving societal problems. No, at the end of the day, that's what we move money for, to build new things, to build better things, um, to really create a, a future for all of us. And um, I, uh, yeah, I think uh, sustainability is, uh, it's, it's the same as stewardship in some ways, Bill, I agree. It means really understanding, you know, what are the challenges and, and what do we need to tackle? I think sustainability in some ways, it's a bit more narrow and that it already recognizes what our main challenges are at the moment. And that's using more than we have on a continuous basis. Um, and so, yeah, I think look, bankers around the world have recognized that sustainability is at the moment, the key challenge that climate, that environmental issues, but even social sustainability 
are really what will make or break our future um, as a whole and, and globally. And um, I always say, you know, the banking system is is the the veins, the cardiac system of, of the global economy. And uh, so uh, that's where its role lies. And I think that's also where the success lies. Um, at the end of the day, you either thrive with your society or you go down with your society. Banking is not apart from society. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think we are looking forward to fantastic new ideas and products and new ways of doing things. And uh, when we look at innovation in, in recent years, you know, I think we saw some amazing things happening outside Europe. Um, you know, when you just think, for example, about mobile banking, that didn't start necessarily in Europe. And uh, so, yeah, I think just harnessing that global potential and uh, making sure the banking industry helps bring about a sustainable future that uh, should should excite or will excite i'm sure lots of people because i mean at the end of the day you know when you have a two-year-old like tippy uh you do want her to be proud of you not just the other way around and uh i think uh making a positive difference in your job is how you do that now thank you i'm bernard welcome back i'm i'm going to come to each of the past winners with the, the broadly the same question so Bernard, you're the quick thinker. So the question is, what would you say to those contemplating entering the competition this year? Um, I, I would say do it. Uh, when I, when I, I was thinking about joining at the beginning, I was quite anxious about the process. But what I found was that the competition provided me with the opportunity to even improve my skills. So uh, I, I, did, I did a lot of research, a lot of talking to and also, uh, a lot of talking to other people and doing interviews. And what I found was, while well, in the process and the journey, not only do you build different contacts, and you, you also get to know different things that you didn't even know existed. So I would say definitely take the plunge and, and you never know, your idea might be what somebody else is waiting on in, in order to be able to, I would, I would say, make a change or improve the life of others. So Robert, you've, um won the competition in the past, you've been on the judging panel for a number of times in the past, what would you be saying to those who might be reluctant or may need some encouragement or are just thinking about it? What would you be saying to them? I would give them a very strong um, uh, uh, plus about getting involved. I think you're going to have, um, it's, it's actually great fun. Yes, it's challenging because it adds additional work. So let's be candid about it. There is some additional work involved in it. but it is um, a great way for you to really investigate your idea and any of the innovations. And it's a wonderful um, place to share that idea and to take it on to its next level of development. So I'd say get involved. And Joanna, you, you have been a strong advocate for the competition for which the Institute thanks you. I'm assuming you wouldn't be saying, don't do it, you fools. No, no, I, I mean, I, as I say, I entered because I wanted to put an idea in the spotlight. So if you if you were reticent about applying because you're like, oh, I'm I'm not sure if I'm the right person to do it. I'm not sure about speaking in front of people. I'm not sure if I'm young or a banker. Then, but if you know that you're passionate about people and planet and um, and using the influence that you have and using your voice well, then I would say. Um, go for it and it's a little trite but there's a saying that I sometimes use to psych myself up for these things which is if not you then who and if not now then when like if, if you have an idea and you're not willing to put yourself out there and have the courage to speak out for it how could you expect someone else to and if by speaking and by putting that idea and the cause that you're passionate about in the spotlight you can draw others into it then you're not alone so yeah go for it have belief in your idea have the courage to use your voice well for people and planet and you never know what might happen as a result you like you could actually bring about really positive change so tippy um would you do it again definitely definitely that's just a one word answer but but yeah to, to echo uh jo jo joanna's point i know many many of us me especially 
uh, being in front of people and presenting to 200 or a global audience is not in my comfort zone. It's something I, a year ago I would have run away from. But I think all of us have got personal experiences. All of us have got personal ideas which can really ch change the world. The, 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 reason, the rationale and the reason behind me applying for the Young Banker of the Year 2020 edition was was because I serve as a trustee for a Manchester-based charity called Disabled Living. And first hand, we see what the lack of uh, financial advice and the lack of financial solutions due to, uh, due to people that live with serious injury or, or, or mental incapacity. So that was where my motivation came from to develop my serious injury life care account. And because of what I did, because of me applying for it and me having the courage to put myself out there and come to the Institute with that idea, my bank, is now looking to roll that across uh, and, 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 test, and, and life test it uh, over, over, the, over 2021, that would, not, that would not have happened if I had not applied. So to anyone out there who's thinking about applying for, this, uh, for the 2021 Young Banker of the Year competition, I'll just say three words, go for it. Your idea might just be what the banking industry has been waiting for. Well, thank you, Tippy. The, the Institute is incredibly proud of its uh, winners of this competition, regardless of vintage. Um, I know that from an institute perspective, this shows the very best of our institute. Um, when banking as a profession can be clobbered from time to time, because uh, undoubtedly the behavior of some, um, but this shows us at our very best. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Simon Thompson, the Chief Executive of the Charter Banker Institute now, uh, Simon is going to deal with the practicalities of this uh, year's competition. And I know he will be delighted to have heard those resounding endorsements from each of the, the past winners and a third party verification from Simone too. So Simon, I can see that trophy glinting on the corner of your screen. Um, over to you uh, for the details of the competition. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, you've heard from our young bankers, some still young, some with more experience now, but all a great credit to our banking profession. But could you or someone you know be our Young Banker of the Year 2021 and join Tippy, Joanna, Bernard, Robert and the 37 previous winners of our competition? Do you have the curiosity and creativity that Robert mentioned? Are you an over-energized misfit, as Joanna very modestly described herself? And do you have the passion for changing the world that Simone spoke of? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is by entering. So here's how the competition works, and it is quite straightforward. So firstly, go to charteredbanker.com and download the entry form. All you have to do there is tell us a little bit about yourself and present your original idea to improve outcomes for customers, colleagues, and communities that reflects your vision for the future of banking consistent with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. You then need to send that back to us no later than the 26th of March, 2021. And that's it, you're in. Most importantly, if you've got a great idea, please do enter and share it with us. As you've heard from our panelists, don't be shy, don't be anxious, don't think Young Banker of the Year is for somebody else, it's not for someone like you. Don't think you're not qualified. You are, if you've got a great idea, if you're passionate about people, planet and banking with a social purpose, then you're exactly who we want to hear from. Now, after the 26th of March deadline has passed, a judging panel reviews all the proposals we receive, and then we'll, have a, we'll create a long list of candidates who will be invited to discuss their ideas through a video interview. We'll, the judging panel will then select eight entrants to present their ideas at our live online semi-finals, which will take place in June 2021. Semi-finalists will be asked at that point or before the semi-final to secure an executive sponsor from their organisation who will be able to support the development of that proposal in the organisation and try and take it further forward. And then following the semi-finals, a final four will compete in our broadcast grand final in October with the winner chosen by an illustrious panel of judges. So that's it. We've tried to make it as simple and as straightforward as possible. We want to hear from as many proud, professional and purposeful young bankers as we can from around the world. This year's competition will be bigger and better than ever. 
as we are for the first time welcoming applications from around the world in partnership with our great colleagues and friends at UNEPFI. So if you know someone who you think should enter, or if you think you, you could be our Young Banker of the Year 2021, visit chartedbanker.com and enter by the 26th of March. As Joanna told us, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Good luck, and I really look forward to hearing your ideas. Bill, back to you. Uh, thank you, Simon. And for the senior bankers who may be watching and listening to this now or on catch up, if you have a bright young banker, and the, the term young is, uh, is really quite uh, clear in the application, please support them, uh, encourage them, try and help refine the argument because securing that senior sponsor is a really important thing. So for those who are fellows of our institute, members of our institute, maybe sitting in influential or even mentoring positions within our banks, we ask you to give a bit of your time because that's what you can do for these aspirant young bankers. They will hugely appreciate the helping hand, a guiding view from someone senior uh, because just cast your mind back in your own career as I do often to the one or two named people you can think of instantly who were very kind, who were very strong in guiding you and perhaps aided you on your career progression for no other reason than they felt they wanted to pass something on. So to the senior bankers of Robert's generation and my generation who are out there, do the right thing for those who want to come forward, encourage them for goodness sake, encourage them. Uh, please don't put them off. Uh, um, Simon, thanks very much. It's all very clear. It will all pan out in front of us. And before we know it, October 2021 will be here. And Tippy will be a past winner rather than the current winner. And that line of more than 30 or so young bankers of the year um, will be added to by one more indiv individual. Hugely exciting. Time. So wherever you are in the world, that map behind me, wherever you are, it's up to you. Have a go. We look forward to hearing from you. And not everyone can be a winner, but we have had competitors in the past who've had their ideas taken up by their own organizations when they haven't won because they were really good ideas. So it's all there. It's all to play for. I have a couple of um, questions. Uh, for the panelists, uh, from audience members. Uh, what I'd like to ask, and it is on that point, it gave me the sort of the prompt point. Um, Joanna, how did you gather support from seniors in your organization, given that that was really important? How did you, how did you do that other than through your own infectious enthusiasm? <laughs> um, yeah, I think sometimes the best way to get support for an idea is to tell the story of the people who are going to impact it. I mean, I know that as an industry, we're sort of, um, it's become quite, um, I don't know, uh, it, the in thing is to do storytelling. But really where I started was to, um, to listen to people who are experiencing exclusion and to tell their story. Um, then some practical things that I did. So I'm a fan of agile methodology and doing showcases so that anyone can come and learn about what you're doing. Um, and I took over a wall of the office because we were in offices then um, and used whiteboard pens to literally draw out the customer um, experience as it is now and then highlight the questions. So it's back to what Robert was saying before about um, curiosity and creativity. So I was just writing the questions like what would we want someone to feel there? Like, is that what we would want them to experience? What if we did this? What if we did this? And then just um, started gathering um, stakeholders together to have meetings around that wall, really, to add on our, our questions and ideas. So it was a very collaborative approach. Um, but really, the turning point, I suppose, is when you find one or two senior people who care passionately about the cause too. Um, and I was grateful um, to, to find that in Stephen Pearson, who was an advisor to the CEO at the time, um, and to have um, that listening ear and that word of guidance, um, and then be able to talk to the CEO and her leadership team um, about the, the idea. Um, so really, it was, it was started with people and stories, um, and it involved a lot more people through collaboration. Um, but it's, it's really finding one or two people who are senior enough to then 
open doors for you um, is, is how to get it progressed. Thank you. Bernard, in your day, and it wasn't so long ago, <laughs> how did you, how much time was needed um, over and above your day job, as it were? Um, so I, I had a plan with it where I spent a, an hour a day on it. Well, on, you know, working there, I spent an hour a day over over a month to really gather that information. I also spent time with the team. So at that time, I was in the digital team. But what I, what I wanted to implement was in the, with the international transfer markets team. So I spent time with them to understand the ins and outs. And it taught me a lot, strangely enough, and also taught me about the business of international transfers. Um, following on from that, I, with their support, I was able to tell the story, just like Joanna said, I was able to tell the story to senior managers and demonstrate how that my idea benefited not just the customer, but also benefited the bank in the short term as well as the long term. And I found that in, in that time, I was able to build contact and also be able to get into a position where I understood my strengths and weaknesses through the research process. So through the journey, I, I was able to influence others and also gain additional skills as part of it. But I spent an hour a day on it, so nothing too gruesome, just reading and researching and spending time with the team. Thank you. Tiffy, you said um, earlier that this was way out of your comfort zone. Um, how did you overcome the, the nervous side of the equation, you know, getting up to present you were doing this in a digital format, so not quite the same as standing in the mansion house where the room gets bigger, the crowd gets bigger and your notes get smaller. Mm. How did you deal with um, overcoming that fear? You know what, so sometimes it's just, just turning up and just deciding that this is what I'm going to do and just doing it. Uh, the thing, at, at, the, at the end of it, it is my idea. It is what I'm passionate about, and this is what I do on a day-to-day. -day. So I, I, I'm a banker on a day-to-day, -day, so I do the private, commercial, and investment banking. And then also for the, for, for the disabled living charity, I also help and support people living with disabilities and, uh, and, 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 and other vulnerable illnesses. So this is stuff that I know and it's stuff that I do. So it's just having that inner belief that what you've got to say and what, and, 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 and what you've got in front of you will help people and you just seeking all the support and all the help that people are willing to offer provided you ask so first thing first thing for me really was just knowing that i've got something to say second thing was knowing that this product will help people which it currently is doing and thirdly just asking for help where you can because people will help you you just have to put yourself out there thank you simon there's a question coming that probably should be considered by you is how far or how developed should the idea be for that initial uh, application point? What, what shape and form uh, are we talking about? And because most people only ever see the, the final and the polished article, but you know from the genesis of ideas, where does it all sort of begin and what should it look like? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And if, if you don't mind, Bill, I might take um, Sidra's question and then the, the other question from an anonymous. Yeah questioner um, together because I think they're, they're linked. So um, at this first stage of the competition, um, we ask that, you know, you set out your ideas in no more than 700 words. That's about two sides of an A4 sheet of paper. So it's not intended to be to be detailed. And we, we don't necessarily expect you to have developed your idea to, to, to a great extent. Um, you know, you, um, you might you probably won't have done any sort of formal market research, but of course, what you what you should have done, you know, and, and a number of um, our panelists have alluded to this. You know, it, it it almost certainly be an idea rooted in your experience of of working with customers or working with particular groups in society, and and so on, so that you've identified a need. So you'd need to you'd want to tell us about that. Um, you know, what you think the need is, um, what your idea is for for meeting that need. And then, you know, how that could be developed as a, as a product or service to be rolled out by your bank. But I would stress at this first stage, we're not looking for too much detail. The, the purpose of the competition is to give you the time, uh, the help and support to help you develop that idea. And in particular, if, um, if you're selected for the long list um, and then for the semi-final, then at each stage, we'll be asking you to develop the idea further. 
so that by the time you you get to the final in October, um, at that point there would have been um, market research done. You would have thought about you know the the risks and the challenges and how these would be overcome, about how to actually implement the idea. Um, and maybe the other bit of guidance, if I may, that I would, I would give people is in in terms of the um, you know the the overall kind of size of the idea. So remember, this needs to be an idea that can be implemented in your organisation. So you know we we don't want to stop people being ambitious, but if your idea is to completely um, reconfigure uh, but the banking and financial services uh, sector in six months, you know that's probably not implementable. Although if you found a way of doing it and you can convince us of it, wonderful. Um, you know, so so it's got to be an idea that's that's big enough to make meaningful change happen for um, you know for for, for 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 group that you want to help. Um, but that can be implemented by you and your colleagues in the organization. So, you know, for examples, you know, do go have a look at our website and you'll see examples of, um, you know, Tippy's idea. In fact, you can, if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see Tippy and the contestants from this year present their ideas. And that will give you a, 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 an idea of the size and, and scale of ideas and the level of detail you need when you get to the final. But I'd, I would emphasize that's only when you get to the final. Thanks, Simon. Uh, Robert, one for you to cast your mind back. Uh, someone obviously would like a history lesson. Uh, it's a great question that's, uh, you know, asking how have you seen the competition change from that point of being a competitor through to now? And also remind us what your idea uh, was about. Well, the main change that I've seen is, um, I think it, uh, it was, it was Tippi mentioned earlier, was this just the whole internationalisation of the of the the competition when i started it was a, just the scottish institute and the issues um, in the previous years and in my year were very much uh, based around um scotland and the scottish economy and the banking industry in in scotland um uh, but with an international perspective and the year i did it it was a question of what could scott the scottish economy learn and scottish bankers learn from the rapid growth of tiger economies in asia in the late 1980s and early 1990s um, so um, it, 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 it's, that's, that's something which, which I've, um, I really enjoyed working on. And again, I was just listening to some of the other respondents and, um, uh, you know, getting the support of my senior executives at that time um, was absolutely fantastic. Um, the head of strategy was extraordinarily supportive, a guy called David Diebel. And then um, the, the, the uh, head of the retail bank in the, in the bank, uh, a man called uh, Richie Robertson, was just absolutely as supportive as he could be. He was really, really helpful, including giving me access to certain documents that he had, showing trade movements and things with our customers and clients in the Asian in Asian countries. So, yeah, I think it was. Um, uh, it's it's uh, it, it's it's mainly the, what I've seen is the internationalisation. And the second piece is is the whole aspect of um, um, you know the development of you know and reinforcement of banking as a force for good. Um, uh, Joanne mentioned it earlier, I think this whole aspect is something which is, is, I think it's always been a part of banking, I just didn't think we made a very great show of it, and the thing I love about the competition is it's, it's actually always been there, and it's bringing it to the fore, and I think it's wonderful, and a great thing, so that, you know, banking, I do regard as, as almost an essential capability and service, and Simone made that point, I think the wonderful thing is to see young bankers coming up with brilliant ideas, to really make a difference and make a difference with banking um, support for people across both the UK and across the world. And I think I'm, I'm very encouraged by the whole thing. Uh, Simone, you, you did say that earlier. Maybe you could give the audience an idea of what did inspire you uh, sitting in on the, uh, the final as a judge. What, what can you recollect that uh, really enthused you? I think it was very much, uh, you know, there there was uh, Tippy and uh, there were there were three other finalists and uh, just the, the the passion and enthusiasm and the um, the notion of self um, as a banker and uh, maybe I'm going a bit broad here, but uh, you know I think part of of when I think about the principles for responsible banking, which we started developing uh, from April 2018, 
um and and it was and and bear with me but we uh we brought together um bankers from all over the world we had uh people from over 20 countries in the room when we started this and it was quite amazing to see uh, what level of similarity people actually had coming from China, coming from Brazil, coming from South Africa, coming from the US, in terms of what they wanted for banking, uh, what vision they had for banking and for what banking should be and what bankers should be. And, uh, you know, I think the, the young people um, that I saw there all had this understanding of self that as a banker, you know, they're, they're there to solve problem, to help people, uh, to use what they have at their disposal. And uh, I think at the end of the day, that's at the heart of this notion of responsible banking, right? That every banker every day thinks about, okay, how do my decisions, how does my world work impact people around me, the environment, and, and what can I do? to uh to improve that impact and uh it's just uh, it was amazing to see that you know it's not that we need to create this narrative of what it means to be a banker it's already there there are so many people out there who already have this understanding of themselves as a banker as you know uh using uh their profession and their tools for good and we just need to bring this out and it was just amazing uh, yeah, to to have these uh, people, young people there who uh, I think uh, did a fantastic job in inspiring everybody uh, in the audience at the event and, and I hope afterwards. And so, uh, yeah, it's about, you know, uh, spreading that kind of um, that movement, that uh, that energy um, and uh, helping people who kind of think alike on the inside to really come out with it and then create change internally in their own banks. So from a, from a judging perspective, uh, I do wonder how off-putting judges can be. Um, but for anyone who's, who's listening, uh, we make it very clear when we meet the finalists in that final situation, we want them to succeed. We want to see the very best version of them. Uh, we want to see the, the very best output from them. So whoever you face as a judge over the course of the, the competition, they are there hoping that you do very well. That's the, the key. There's no wrong answer. Um, and they're not trying to trip you up and all of those sort of logical things that perhaps you're worrying about. Um, Bernard, you stood in the mansion house and presented your idea from memory. Um, how, how was that glittering evening? Um, I must admit, I was quite nervous at the beginning. Um, however, I think it was definitely one of the highlights of my career and my, I had my family there as well. So. It was it was a very big moment, and I must admit I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it it's I think that the mansion house on football. I, I do hope by by the time we, we get to the final that it will be open, so we can all go there once again. But it was certainly a very beautiful building, a very beautiful evening, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I will definitely recommend people to share that experience once once it is open. But definitely will recommend it. So if, if you are in London and you can arrange a visit, fine. But for this year, we will be virtual all the way through. And the, and oh, the, room, that yeah. you, the room that you present in will be your room. So whether it's Tippy's with uh, his daughter's toys all over the floor, whether it's Bernard with his uh, gaming console, whether it's Joanna in the office because the builders are there, or whether it's in the palatial splendor of the Scottish borders for Robert, um, all of those things. Now, Simone, uh, we thank you particularly. This will be one of the, the, the last um, speaking engagements you'll have in your current position. We wish you well um, with all that's, uh, that's going on in your life. Um, Simon, is there any housekeeping at all that you would like to raise before I do a final up sum? Uh, just a, an important reminder that the uh, the deadline for applications is the 26th of March 2021 and uh, you can find all the details and the application form on our website at www.charteredbanker.com. Thank you Simon. So the final message is crack on, 
um, and get your entry underway. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your insights. We are fast approaching the end of our time together. And all that remains is for me to thank the Chartered Bank Institute team for arranging the session, with particular thanks to Heather Marsh, who makes it all happen. So, Heather, thank you. I know you're hiding. Thank you very much indeed uh, for making it happen to our audience around the world. We, uh, we also say thank you to our panelists, uh, a virtual or maybe an actual round of applause um, for, for their uh, contributions today. And Simon, as ever, our chief executive, thank you for making it all right. And if you're watching live or in catch up uh, from all of us at the Chartered Banker Institute, uh, a good day from those of us in the United Kingdom. Stay well and all the very best of fortune for those who want to enter the 2021 Young Banker of the Year competition. Goodbye. Bye. Cheerio.